Hi, and welcome to the Uplift with Vision. I am here to talk with you and pray with you and just absolutely uplift us all. So let's pray in. Ah, giving great thanks for this time spent together. I am in such gratitude for the technology, for the help, for the uh, attendance for everyone involved in what it takes to create these broadcasts. I am in such gratitude for the day, for spirit unfolding just perfectly, just as it is, and I am so grateful for everyone tuning in, knowing and accepting that we are one, that behind the diversity of all life stands the one life of spirit, expressing through us individually, uniquely, just, just lovingly, as each life form, as all of us and all life on the planet, I know behind the diversity stands the one, God. It is all good, and I give great thanks, and so it is. Amen. So how are you doing today? I'm so glad you tuned in. I'm calling this Thursday's Things, because I want to talk about stuff. I've got my notes here. I'm ready to go. You know, I've been doing a lot of reading to prepare for the uplifts, to prepare for the Sunday talks. So I've been doing a lot of reading, a lot of research. Um, and you know, one of the things that I run across is lists of things, you know, the 10 things that will do this or the 10 things that, you know, really very interesting. So some of the things that I found was, is a list of the 10 things that will make you happy or the 10 things that will increase your self-esteem or the 10 things that will make you more likable and, you know, just lists like that. It's really very interesting. Done by psychologists and psychiatrists and scientists and, you know, every ist on the planet. But what I've noticed is they're mostly the same list. No, yeah, really, it's true. It's really interesting. Most of them are the same things. You know, they might say them a different way, but all of the lists tend to be the same things that will make us happy and improve our self-esteem and make us more likable and make us love life more and all of that. Ernest Holmes said this in his Beverly Hills lecture series. He said, all power, all wealth, all everything that the human mind holds worthwhile is worthless without happiness. And so that's really what we're talking about. What makes life worth living, right? Happiness. What makes uh, our life, you know, not a drudge, not an endurance contest, not a, not a just a, you know, an unfoldment of one, one chaotic event after another. Happiness. We are here to be happy. We are here to unfold in joy and in harmony, in love. We are here to see life the way spirit sees us. Ernest Holmes' favorite little quote from, from uh, Sri Aurobindo was, we are here uh, for the delight of God. And I love that idea, right? We're not here to learn lessons. This is not a classroom. We don't fail and have to repeat a grade. We are simply here for the delight of God. And if we are miserable, we're not the delight of God, I don't think, right? So we are here to find what we love, what, what loves through us, and have more of that, you know? So I've been, like I said, reading a lot about this and, and you know, they're all the same things. The things that make us happy, the things that make us healthy, the things that make us more self-assured, they're all pretty much the same things. And you know, Abraham Lincoln said this, he said, folks are usually about as happy as they make their minds up to be. And I, and I find that that is true as well. The happiness comes within us. We're not here to find happiness like it's here or it's there or it's in some philosophy or another or it's in some help, self-help book or another. We are here to let the happiness that's within us out. We are here to demonstrate the happiness that spirit is out into the world. And, and you know, that's really what the scientists find and that is what the psychologists and the psychiatrists find is that it's an inside job. Happiness always is, just like all of the qualities of God. Happiness, joy, is an inside job. It is found within us. We already have it. It's up to us to discover ways to demonstrate it, ways to let it out of us. 
There was a research, uh, father and son research team, Ed Diener and Robert Diener, and, and along with uh, Stanford psychologist, Sonia Libor, <laughs> let me get this straight, Lyubomsky and ethicist Stephen Post have studied people all over the world to find out how things like money, attitude, culture, memory, health, altruism, and our day-to-day -day habits, how, they, how all of that affects our well-being, affects our state of mind, affects how we approach life, and how happy and fulfilled and satisfied we are with it. Now, Gandhi said this about all of, all, all of this search for happiness. He says, happiness is when you think and what you say and what you do are in harmony, right? Absolutely true. What you think, what you say, and what you do are in harmony. And so that's why I think a lot of us are not feeling that level of happiness. Maybe we're saying one thing and doing another. Maybe our head and our heart and our feet are not aligned, right? And all in the same direction. So here are the 10 things that science say, this is what science proves, make us happier people. So we want to incorporate as many of these things in our daily life as we can. And the first thing on their list is savor the moment. And savor the moment to me just means be mindful. Be where you are when you're there. Be with whoever is in front of you as long as they're in front of you. Give that person 100% of your attention. And then when it moves on, when you move on, then give the next thing your attention. But be where we are, right? Ram Das, be here now. That's really what we're saying. To savor the moment is to be mindfulness during our day. So whatever we're doing, give that our full attention. Whoever we're talking to or the job that's at hand, whatever it is that we're doing deserves our full attention. Be in the moment, savor the moment, find the good in whatever condition you find yourself and be there. Uh, number two, avoid comparisons. I love this because it makes me think of that Oscar Wilde quote right away. You know, be yourself, everyone else is taken. <laughs> I love that. But it's true, avoid comparisons. Uh, there's an old quote that I remember, but I don't remember who said it now, that said, the only person you should compare yourself with is the person you were yesterday. And it's true, right? We, we are forever seeking to know of ourselves, of, of ourselves as more and more spirit. So that's about the only thing that you can compare yourself with is the previous version of yourself. But don't compare yourself with anyone else. You know, usually what we do is we, we take our amateur selves and we compare that to professionals in, this, in the same field, right? And it's unfair and it always beats us up and we always come out on the losing end of comparisons. So just avoid comparison altogether. You are the only person that can do what you do the way you can do it. So do it. Don't even look over there. Keep your eyes on your own paper. <laughs> You're going to be doing what you do perfectly, perfectly the way you do it, right? Perfectly the way you do it. Number three, it says put money low on the list. Put money low on the list. And I know from teaching uh, financial freedom, the principles of financial freedom class, where they say when you chase money, it leads to heartbreak. But when you do what you love, the money will follow. And I think that that's true. I don't necessarily mean it believes that everything you do for love, you can monetize. I don't know that that's necessarily true. Some things you'll do for love for love, and that's that. But many things, if you follow your heart, you, money will follow that. And money will wind up flowing into your experience simply because you're doing what you love. But don't make money the goal because if you're chasing money, it does lead to heartbreak many, many times. And, and if it's not heartbreak, it very rarely satisfies when we're doing something purely for, for money. So number four, have meaningful goals. And I love that idea, you know, have meaningful goals. What does that mean to us? You know, I, I, 
I think it's got to be something that's attainable, but something that stretches us as well. If we have a goal that, you know, we're going to do something or try something or we're going to stretch in an area that, you know, we haven't done before, it's a worthy goal. It's a worthwhile goal. But it should be meaningful and it should be attainable, you know. Like I'm sitting here in my, in, well, in my 60s and I'm five feet tall. I'm not going to make it a goal of joining the NBA, you know. <laughs> Let's face it, not going to happen but a worthwhile goal. I'm going to save up for, for that vacation that I've wanted to take for a long time and, and it'll become attainable. I'm going to save money and you know buy stock from this company that I've always wanted to have or, or something like that or I'm going to take that class in whatever, fill in the blank. What kind of class do you want to take? In quilting or skydiving or whatever. To have goals but have them attainable goals but but in that, make sure you stretch a little bit, right? Make sure that you stretch a little bit. You don't want to just be an expert in everything that you do in your life. Because you're, if you're an expert in everything you do, you're not learning anything new. So, so have meaningful goals, but let them be attainable. Now, of course, and number five is meditate. You know how. We talked all about it yesterday. I hope you were tuning in. Meditate. It's a great, great way to come to that center, to come to that peaceful, that well of stillness that you are, that strength and power and, and awesome reserve that you have deep within you. Learn to meditate. Even if you start with 30 seconds, 45 seconds, it's okay. Build a meditation practice for yourself. It changes the way you look at life. It changes the neural pathways in your brain and it absolutely will change your, your conditions around you. And, and number six, make a family. <laughs> now, um, you know, don't go, you know what? Well, wait a minute, let me rephrase that. <laughs> I'm talking about make a family around you, whether it's your biological family or whether it's your logical family. You know, sometimes our family are not our bio family, you know, and, and it's just the truth. Sometimes our family are the people around us who are on the same wavelength we are. Find your tribe. Find your people. Find the people that resonate with you. Find the people you resonate with. Find your like-minded people. They're your tribe. They are your family. Find them. Allow them to find you. Um, you, you need to have the support of people who think uh, think like you, that can support you, so that when you do try those goals, they're your cheering section, right? They know you're capable. They know you can do this. They know you've got this. So find, find your family. Make your family. If it's biological, if it's a combination of biological and logical, doesn't matter. Your family's your family, right? So find your family. Um, number seven. Number seven says smile even if you don't feel like it. I like that. I like that. Sometimes I get lost in my own head, right? Particularly when I'm standing online, you know, which we're doing a lot of lately, six feet away from each other. But I've noticed, and you know what's really funny? You can tell when someone's smiling behind that mask. You absolutely can. So smile. Smile at the people you don't know. Smile at the people behind their masks. And you can see them smile back because, you know, your smile happens in your eyes just as much as it happens on your lips. So you can see it. So smile, even if you don't feel like it. Smile at the person that's checking out your groceries or taking your dry cleaning or whatever. Just smile. And smile with your whole face, right? When somebody sees your eyes squinting up, they know you're smiling behind that mask. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful gift you can give to the world, right? It doesn't cost anything. Number eight, be thankful. Be thankful. You know, there is so much more to be grateful than to be sorry for. Thank you from Jamie Lula. I think that was a line in his song. So much more to be grateful than to be sorry for. Even for what we are going through right now. Even for this time of, of you know, unusual events. COVID-19, sheltering at home, wearing masks whenever you go up, gloving and gowning when you pump gas, whatever it is, you know to be thankful for life, just life, to be thankful we're alive, to be thankful for our health, to be thankful for this technology that brings us together over the miles. 
Right. Being thankful, being grateful. Start a, gra a, a gratitude journal. Uh, write down things that just come pop into your mind. I just planted some new plants in the backyard. I'm so grateful for butterfly bush. Have you seen it? It's a great plant, big purple blooms and butterflies just love them. I'm so grateful for the diversity of plant life, you know? Some, some plants just thrive in this desert community we have. Some just don't make it. So there's a plant, there's a bloom for everyone, right? For every climate, for every microclimate. You can be grateful for so many things. Be grateful, be thankful. That was number eight. Number nine, move. <laughs> I was just talking about this recently. Move, move your body, get up, dance, exercise. Do a little cardio in your family room or your living room or wherever you're sheltering in place. Do a little dance, you know, um, do a little exercise, get those little one pound or five pound weights and, and work your biceps and your triceps. Even if you're sitting watching TV, you can do that. If you don't have little hand held can, uh, um, weights, you can use soup cans. Do, do what you can. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep limber. Keep lubricated. Keep walking. You can walk. Take a walk around the neighborhood. Take a walk in the park. Take a walk someplace. Keep moving. And number 10, the last one, give it away. <laughs> I love that. Now, for me, that's about clean out the garage. Get rid of the stuff. And you know, the, those um, businesses will open up again. Right, so I know they may not be open now, the places where you give your things away to, whether they're uh, wounded warriors or disabled vets or Goodwill or whatever, I'm, I'm not telling you where to go, but I know you probably have a, a favorite place you donate to. They will be opening, they will be opening soon, so, so give your stuff away, make boxes up of the things that you're going to get rid of. Give it away, clear it out. Even if you can't give it right now, you can make up a box to give when the stuff opens. Make a vacuum, right? Create a vacuum in your life. The even, even giving away the things that, you know, yeah, you use, you love, but you don't use anymore, you haven't used in six months or a year, get rid of it. Create that vacuum for spirit to flow into your experience as a new event, as a new item, as a new experience, right? Give stuff away, give it away. You don't need it anymore. I wanna, I wanna finish up by what Ernest Holmes here said in Richer Living. He said, it is only as you live life affirmatively that you can be happy. Knowing that there is but one spirit in which everyone lives, moves, and has his being. You are to feel this spirit, not only in your consciousness, but in your affairs. You are united with all. You are one with the eternal life itself. The presence of spirit within you blesses everyone you meet, tends to heal everything you touch, brings gladness into the life of everyone you contact. And that's from our founder. And you know it's true. You are a blessing to the world. Be that. Be that. Open yourself up. Be the blessing that you are meant to be. And absolute happiness will pour forth from you. It is the way it is. It's within us always. It's for up to us. It's up to us to let it out. Let's pray. <sighs> Giving great thanks for this time spent together. I know it is all God. It is all good. I know that this time is so precious. I know it is spirit just revealing itself to spirit. As Ernest Holmes said, deep calling unto deep and deep replying. This is what we do when we are together. We go deep, we absolutely know it is spirit leading the way, and we are better for it. I give great thanks for this time spent together. I know it is all God, it is all good, and so it is. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Remember vision from my heart to yours. We are one. There is no separation ever. There is only one God, one spirit, one vision, 
Love to you all. Bye-bye.